Welcome back once again. Yes, we're in a slightly different space now. This is a bit smaller, a bit more compact. Hopefully it's not too echoey. We'll see how we go. Okay, time has come to talk about GNOME 40. Yes, GNOME. I'm committing to that pronunciation. Done it for so long now, I can't go back on it. So GNOME 40 came out uh, at least in a nightly build uh, not too long ago, a few weeks ago as the time they're recording this video. And it has made one fundamental shift in the way that it presents the desktop and how you navigate around the user interface. But apart from that, it's, it's iterative at best. Uh, once you flip your head sideways and learn to look at things horizontally, it's really the same old GNOME that we've come to expect. And that is, if you're not a fan of minimalism or app-centered design, then this is probably not for you and you probably don't run GNOME. But if you are on board for all that, let's have a poke around and let's see what GNOME 40 has to offer us. Uh, and keep in mind, there's, it's all too easy to bully design that's different. I'm okay with different as long as it can be justified. The GNOME team have their reasons as for why they've made these changes. And majority of it is based on user testing. Somebody's got to push desktop design forward. May as well be the GNOME team to get it done. Let's check it out. We're looking at GNOME 40. Now, for context, I'm looking at this through the Fedora 34 beta. Now, I'm not going to make any comments about Fedora as a distribution during this video. I'm just doing a walkthrough of the changes that they made in the interface. And also, I'll have a look at the perspective that GNOME brings to the table and then my own perspective on some of these changes. Now, by and large, I am relatively easy to please in that I can usually find something to like in almost every project. Um, however, I think that it is worth mentioning at this stage that there is such a thing known as change for changes sake. Before we get too much deeper into this, definitely go and check that you're subscribed to the channel. We're chasing down our 100,000 subscribers. It's a journey. We've been on it for a while and uh, your sub and notification bell is always appreciated. I think there were some fundamental problems that GNOME wanted to solve when they decided to make this change to a horizontal layout. Now, if you don't know what I mean, traditionally speaking, GNOME, uh, as the GNOME shell anyway, used to run with the activities scrolling vertically, and you would see them stack up uh, along here on the right-hand side of the display. Now, usually also by default, the dock or um, would be positioned on the left-hand side of the screen, and it created like a, a left-to-right read of the desktop. Now, the GNOME team definitely had their reasons for why they made it that way in the first place. And I think the left to right nature of their workflow worked quite well. And as is typical in the Linux and open source community, as soon as people had gotten used to a particular workflow and way of doing things that was initially controversial, then when it is changed, suddenly everyone riots once again. I don't think that's the case this time around. I think the, the community has chilled out mostly, I guess, but the left to right uh, read of the workspace in terms of uh, the dock on the left hand side, the activities view, or a kind of an expose app view of whatever you've got open on the workspace here in the middle, and then the workspaces scrolling or stacked vertically, dynamically, of course, uh, on the right here, led to a, a nice workflow. It was a bit different. And I think the what they've come to realize is that the discoverability of this workspace takes a bit of learning curve. And that's why big name distributions like Ubuntu tend to customize this distribution uh, or this interface to make it fit with what consumers expect, or at least people that have used a computer before. Now, what I would say is that the biggest concession that, uh, that the GNOME project have made this time around is that they are admitting in some ways that their previous attempts at a minimal app-centered and uh, distraction-free de um, user interface design was a little bit too obscured. In that, the learning curve possibly was too great, and so they have settled on creating an interface that, uh, that at least at first pass, feels familiar to those who have used Mac OS and, and Windows before, in that fundamentally the workspaces scroll left to right instead of up and down, and the dock runs on the bottom. Now, there's still a bit of discussion and, uh, and potentially they are experimenting here with some other ideas of where to put the top panel. Uh, because I read a news story recently that the GNOME team are looking at what it means 
uh, for their desktop moving forward now that they've made one horizontal change, what would it mean to change the top panel? As this panel doesn't really achieve a whole lot anymore apart from housing the settings and notifications up in the middle here. Nevertheless, the big changes that come with this GNOME 40 release that I'm most excited about is the admittance that touchpad gestures mean a lot to users. And this is something that I've been railing on for quite some time. And the fact that we now have one-to-one -one touchpad gestures built into a desktop environment is very cool. And I'll be interested to see what other distributions make of this uh, as they roll out their features. Now, currently you can only get GNOME 40 on OpenSUSE and Fedora and the nightly builds uh, that the GNOME team put out. Uh, so that is to say that uh, Ubuntu 21.04 won't be shipping with GNOME 40, uh, but they will forward, or they will bring forward some of the apps from the GNOME 40 release cycle so that the apps are up to date, but the GNOME shell itself will remain uh, at version 3.38. So what does this mean in practice? Because at the end of the day, I haven't used this, this particular interface for very long. This is definitely a first impressions kind of thing. While they have made some tweaks to other areas of the OS in the core apps and they've updated some things, they've put some more spit and polish on bits and pieces. Honestly, it feels really, really similar to what we've come to expect from GNOME. The biggest thing that I think is really going to irk experienced use, uh, users of uh, Gnome is that I'm not sure at what level the compatibility for Gnome extensions is enabled. So with some of the more famous uh, Gnome extensions, let's say GS Connect, be interesting to see what versions, uh, which extensions have been updated for Gnome 40. For example, I know uh, Dash to Dock has only just been updated for Gnome 40. And I think the compatibility of extensions uh, as the desktop rolls forward has historically been an issue for the GNOME desktop. So I would encourage you if you're looking to jump on this bandwagon relatively soon uh, and you're wanting to run Fedora, OpenSUSE or even the nightly build of GNOME, bear in mind that some of your favorite extensions which, uh, which a lot of people rely on to uh, make the GNOME desktop work well for them uh, might not work yet. Now here's what I will say. I still think out of the box while the GNOME 40 release is a huge step forward in making a workspace that is far more discoverable on first boot, I do have to think at what point have the trade-offs been made between users who have gotten used to GNOME Shell and the way that it works and prefer it, to be honest, uh, and those who will potentially find GNOME Shell as a new interface to use. The reason I want to sort of pit those two ideals against each other is that, and this is just a hunch, but I do feel like that sometimes in the open source software world, we tend to prioritize the needs of the new user and their preferences when it comes to how they use a computer and what they expect from their software. We often prioritize those features and those uh, that system of thinking over pandering to the needs of the community that we've already built and uh, pandering makes it sound like it's a bad thing but honestly looking after the needs of your users is what has uh, is what has led to a, a desktop like KDE Plasma being as good as it is constant iteration and contribution to make it better for the users who already use Plasma as opposed to building a desktop from the ground up for the use of others uh, or for the use of people that haven't come across the GNOME desktop before. Now, I do love the fact that the onboarding and the, the setup tour app is really smooth. I love the fact that they have included this out of the box and that each release, it looks better, more polished, more colorful, and they step through the gestures and the workspace and all that kind of thing. Um, and so I really think GNOME is making amazing strides at becoming more accessible to the end user. But I do wonder about the trade-offs that they make along the way that affect the users that have been with them for a long time. For me personally, uh, for me personally, while I think GNOME 40 is a great step forward and the desktop as it moves forward, it needs to be able to evolve and get cleaner, better, more efficient, all that good stuff. What is the cost of innovation? At the moment, Plasma, at least for me, seems to be hitting that sweet spot between iteration and innovation quite nicely. Whereas the jumps between 
GNOME releases, while it's getting cleaner and more polished overall, I do feel like there are some uh, users who are being left behind. And that's something that I guess is good about the open source world. If you're not happy with one product, you can jump over to the next one. That's where I'll leave today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.